The Way. The Way. Which is uh, directed by uh, Emilio Estevez and uh, starring Martin Sheen. So it's the two members of that family who have not been so much in the press of late. Yes. And the story is Martin Sheen is a doctor and very early on in the film he gets a message that his son, played by Emilio Estevez, has died whilst uh, attempting to walk the 800-kilometre uh, Camino de Santiago pilgrimage which goes through the French Pyrenees into Spain. And his, he therefore is called upon to go and collect the body. So it's very, you know, very, very sort of, you know, moving and tragic beginning. He's called to go and collect the body. When he gets out there, he finds out what it was that his son wanted to do and begins to feel that maybe there is some unfinished business which he should himself finish. Here's a clip. What was he doing out there? He was on pilgrimage on the Camino, walking the road to Santiago de Compostela. The way of St. James is a religious and spiritual journey. People from very different backgrounds, faith and generations have walked the path from here in the French Pyrenees to Santiago de Compostela. 800 kilometers on the northwestern coast of Spain for over a thousand years. We believers are told that the remains of St. James, the Apostle of Jesus, are interned there. And so we make pilgrimage. This is what your son Daniel was doing. Why was he alone? Many people choose to make the trek alone. The way is a very personal journey, Mr. Avery. That's the uh, fruity tones of Checky Carrier and, of course, uh, Martin Sheen. So, the story is that he then decides, obviously, that what he will do is he will make the pilgrimage that his son didn't make because all the way there's this sort of backstory that his son has a wanderlust, is out, you know, seeing the world. And it's something that he doesn't do anymore. He's got to a point in his life when he, you know, he's, he's, he's living a sort of fairly staid existence. And so he, de he decides that he will go and do the pilgrimage, taking the ashes and you know, distributing on the way. And so clearly the scene is set for a voyage of self-discovery in which, um, you know, lessons will be learned and wounds will be healed and uh, difficult subjects will be addressed. And very early on, he finds himself in the company of other walkers, despite the fact that he wants to walk alone. He immediately finds himself in the company of others. So firstly, there's a, there's a Dutchman who has a, a weight issue. He says he wants to do the walk because he wants to lose some weight. And it's quite clear that actually what's going on is he wants to lose some weight because there's become some rift between him and his partner, him and his wife, who no longer thinks that he's quite the person that he used to be. Then we have um, an, a, a, a woman who is chain smoking the whole time when he first meets her seems to be incredibly brittle played by Deborah Cara Unger who is sometimes referred to as Deborah Unger but now more now Deborah Cara Unger who I was first aware of in Crash in the David Cronenberg Crash which I thought was a fabulous movie she's smoking all the time chain smoking she's very brittle very edgy very sort of you know aggressive sounding and she's clearly got issues and she says that what she wants to do is she wants to give up smoking but clearly there's something else going on in the background and then they bump into along the route James Nesbitt who is an author who appears to be completed, completely writer's blocked and when you first meet him he's incredibly annoying and uh, blathering and talking and then as you go on being with him he remains incredibly annoying and blathering and intrusive and, and so it's there's a little a hint of the Wizard of Oz, you know, that one of them wants a heart, one of them wants a brain, one of them wants the courage, and one of them just wants to get back home. And I'm sure that that's a, you know, it's a deliberate thing. You know, that's sort of hardwired into it. So it's one of those films which, at the very beginning, you know exactly how it's going to pan out. And you can see all the, you know, you can see the terrain ahead of you, you can see the path ahead of you, and you know what's going to be achieved during the journey. And that is both its strength and its weakness. I mean, it is, let's be honest, a sort of televisual... It's the kind of thing which would, would have made a good TV movie of the week. And it's clearly, a, it's clearly something which is a personal and a passionate project. And it's clearly something... Because what happens all the way through is that Sheen sees Emilio Estevez playing the lost son along the way. So as he's doing the walk, he's effectively, you know, the, the sun spirit is walking with him. And there's an awful lot of, you know, you can see these things coming up. There'll be fl uh, signposted moments in which people will sit down and they will discuss their own personal issue. And then there's a moment when everyone gets drunk and everyone blows up and everybody shouts at each other. And then there's a moment of resolution. And then, and so, uh, so there's nothing in it that's surprising at all. And it would be very easy to be completely dismissive. And I have to say at the beginning, I thought, oh, you know, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get the 800 kilometre walk and on the on you know, en route, we're going to get these life lessons learned. But it is done with... I mean, it is exactly the movie that it that it looks like being. Yes, what, what is that sound that's suddenly in my ears? It sounds I, I like... Think it's, I think someone's turned on the cooling system. What is it? If some, I'm, my review is getting overcooked, so they've actually turned on the refrigeration system in, yeah. order, to, in order to calm the, the temperature in on. the room. OK, fine. It's better than a hose. Yeah, fine. OK. And uh, so 
it, there is nothing surprising about the movie at all, but it's put together in a way which is, you know, it feels like a work which is personal and it feels like a work which is heartfelt. And that is, in many ways, its downfall because that is what it is and all it is. But there's nothing wrong with a film doing that. As I said, in a way, I think it's it, it, it's, it will probably find its, its proper home on television, on video, it might be well be one of those films that people sort of return to years later and say, oh, you know, I kind of quite like that, it was kind of cute. There's a weird thing happening with Martin Sheen's hair, which is I can't quite decide what colour it is, and it doesn't seem to be able to quite decide what colour it is either. And some of the, the characters have drawn very, very sort of sketchily and very, you know, she's got this issue, he's got this issue, they've got that thing. There's an awful lot of scenery, <coughs> pardon me, there's an awful lot of scenery on the way, of course, as there would be, and it's one of those, you know, trekking movies, we have to go from here to here to here, and we have to have these these bullet point discussions, you know, at key point. And all of that means, you know, it's cinematically, it's, it's not extraordinary, it's nothing to write home about, it is a TV movie of the week. But I would be lying if I didn't say that during the course of it, I thought, well, you know what? It's made with good intentions, it's obviously made with its heart in the right place, and it's a kind of affecting zone, despite the fact that you could see the entire terrain from the very, very beginning, as it walked that path, it sort of did so in a way which was acceptably engaging.